We will finish this week as we like to do with looking at our Reddit Christianity question of the week. Uh, I think we have a nice one, a little more lighthearted one, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. So do you want to read this question in the comment? It says, why do people make fun of the Pentecostal church? I just read Acts chapter 2, and it talks about the disciples, apostles, receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. If it's in the Bible, how come so many people, sometimes even Christians, make fun of Pentecostal churches or when they see people dancing, speaking in tongues? Well, this is simple. Pentecostals are stupid morons that never read their Bible and don't understand context. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I think this is kind of, I'm just joking there. Please don't throw spears at me. I think this is kind of the problem, what we just said, right? Every church has to prove their superiority over every other church by insulting all the things about them. And we will acknowledge here as reformed Christians, we are some of the worst. The reform camp is awful at their sort of superiority and looking down their nose at every other. No one's ever read the Bible in context besides a reformed Christian, you're like, Hey, I did it before here. I was <laughs> right talking about myself. <laughs> but I think this is a legitimate question. People do mock the Pentecostal church. Um, that's not uncommon to see here, but I think the internet, at least this is kind of my thought. The internet plays a large part in this. Um, and now I do believe that a lot of these charismatics that you see online, you know, like the YouTube prophets, I do believe that they deserve to be mocked. Um, because I think we see mockery in the Bible for false prophets, you know, Elijah mocking the prophets of Baal, like, oh, mm. maybe Baal's yeah. on the, you know, going to the bathroom right now. <laughs> um, so I think some people are so absurd and so blasphemous in their content that they deserve to be mocked. Um, but you know, labeling all charismatics as people to be, to be made fun of, we certainly don't agree with that. Um, but I just, you know, this, again, the internet plays a part with this. And I think just kind of the nature of social media and content creation, or really even like 24 hour news media cycles, I think breed a lot of what gets made fun of, right? Because you've kind of got to be bigger, you got to be louder, you got to be more bombastic more over the top in order to kind of grow your audience. You know, so it's not enough that you just claim to be a prophet of God or whatever. No, you've got to be Jesse Duplantis now, who just has 24-7 running conversations with God. Jesse can't even get a word in edgewise because God just cannot stop talking to Jesse. He's got so much to say to Jesse, right? And you have prophets today. They didn't just receive a vision from heaven. No, no, they go to heaven regularly, all the time God takes them to heaven and they see all sorts of insane, you know, unbiblical things. So I think this is just part of it. Internet, mm -hmm. social media, you know, like how come being a prophet means you have to dye your hair blue or like, I know what is that about? Um, like you just have to be more than others to grow your brand, I think, which leads to a lot of things that deserve to be made fun of. Again, we kind of started this episode by a little bit of making fun of this girl at Pre uh, Princeton Seminary talking about Jesus told us to fast and pray and I'm on a hunger strike for Palestine. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You guys are crazy. Um, now, Nikki and I, we're largely in the cessationist camp, though we do differ a little bit on our views of the spiritual gifts. Um, and, you know, especially the more sign gifts, the miraculous gifts and things. But I don't think it's right to label everyone who does believe in them as not Christian. Like we definitely would not go that far. No. And we certainly wouldn't say that they should be mocked for their faith. Again, we've got great friends and people that are very charismatic that we believe their faith in God is as solid, mm -hmm. if not more yes. than ours. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I think some should be made fun of. I think that's right. But most should not. Uh, to be fair though, and again, this is part of internet culture, right? But like when you see churches that are like on Facebook and Twitter or whatever, they're like swinging swords around during the service, maybe 
just pulling this out of thin air. Maybe you have a shirtless sword swallower climbing a pole at your surfaces. Uh, like we're all human, right? You see stuff and you're like, this is ridiculous. Um, it's hard to just not laugh and point it out. And I think you can laugh and point things out without necessarily trashing somebody as like a heretic or an unbeliever. Right. Or you can watch somebody say or do something, you know, like I saw a video, the reason I mentioned the sword swinging at the service, I saw a video of some dude like swinging a huge broadsword at his service. And like, it's of course ridiculous, but I don't discount the man's sincerity for really wanting to love God. Just, I would say he's going about it in a very wrong way. There was someone, there was a lady who had a sword when we went to like, a, I think it was a Assemblies of God Church. The good thing, though, Michigan. at all of these Pentecostal but, churches is they cut your arm off. Someone with the gift of healing is probably there, and they will just regrow oh, your arm. Yeah. Service, right? Yeah, so don't worry about all the little kids running around <laughs> near this lady who's worshiping God and holding a sword. And Yeah. Yeah, that like, was weird. So I think that's why it gets made fun of. I think the internet leads to a lot of this stuff because you get exposed to it. People got to build a brand, right? So they're going to show it. Uh, I mean, we've done skit or we've done uh, discussions on here from things we've seen on woke preacher clips, which is kind of the same thing. These super liberal churches, a lot of that deserves to be mocked and made fun of because it's ridiculous and it blasphemes God. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the other stuff, you know, it gets put on there so people can chuckle at it. But really, we shouldn't just discount all of these people's faith as like, oh, they don't read their Bible. That's why they believe in this. Or that, you know, it's the same thing we do mm -hmm. with Catholics, right? We have to be careful to I be like, people have a no lot. Catholic has ever read the Bible. I think there's just a lot of bad um, shepherds. You know, oh, the you were is. reading that scripture recently, the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy, and it was referencing really... Yeah, those are false teachers. False teachers are those that are pastors. They don't, they're not leading their flock the right way. So really, can you blame them? I mean, they're maybe taught that they don't really need to read the word themselves. I don't know, like the Catholic churches, but... Oh. No, so I think, why did we make fun of them, right? Like, I mean, a lot of it deserves to be made fun of in my opinion. I don't think that's wrong to laugh at a blaspheming false prophet. You're right to do that. Um, now, keep your mockery and your criticisms, again, going back to what we talked about, consider how you carry yourself because this person still needs to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. right. So when you just trash them and, you know, all sorts of ungodly ways, you're harming your own witness there. Yep. But I think the internet just breeds an environment where you know, it's easy to throw stuff up on line without a whole lot of context and just chuckle at it. But again, we want to be careful, right? Because just because someone's charismatic or Pentecostal doesn't mean they don't love God, doesn't mean they're not saved, doesn't mean they don't right. read their Bible um, or all these sorts of things, right? I mean, so, we're supposed to be known by our love for one another. Right. So we got to be careful. And like, there's certain things, you know, again, we're cessationists by and large, though we differ, but we recognize that the Bible speaks on these miraculous sign gifts. We just think you have to understand them in a different way. You know, it's not like saying, you know, a false prophet who goes to heaven and they're like, oh, I went to heaven and saw I was talking with a bunny. And you're like, that's not in there. You're just completely making that up. Uh, I'm making fun of you now because that's ridiculous. So, um, yeah. That's our Reddit Christianity question of the week. Why do they make fun of the Pentecostal church? Well, a lot of it needs to be made fun of. Well, maybe just share some of the crazy things you've seen or on um, online or maybe in a church you visited. Did you call it out? <laughs> right. Or just like, you know, don't build your brand off of trying to make fun of other people. Um, you know, if you're a Christian and you want to build a Christian brand, build it off of making a case for Christ and not just making fun of other Christians. I don't know, that's an idea. Uh, maybe if more people did that, there'd be less videos online to make fun of. Maybe. Just something to consider. 